Hey everyone, Scott with Air Gunner Reviews. So today we're talking about O-rings, different type of options for your Pistel X68 or your Intrabuster, whichever version that you have. Um, I have come across several different types. We're going to take this apart right now and we're going to show you what I'm talking about regard to, regarding the type of O-ring that you need. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. And then we do a little explaining, not just about O-rings. Okay, so in here, this is the O-ring that can fail. Now, I haven't had mine fail at all. I did replace it. This is the original that came with it. I wanted to take it out and try several different O-rings to see which one would work best. This right here is the O-11. And there's several manufacturers that make it. The larger one is the O21. Um, there's also another O-ring in here. Now, I have not confirmed um, that this is an O21, to be honest with you. DK Spencer did a really good um, um, detailed video on these. And um, as far as we can tell, this is the O21. This has been confirmed. Absolutely, that's an O11. Um, and it has worked fine in mind. Now, I just want to let you know, I have never had a failure with this. But with any high jewel marker, you always have a chance. So it is good to be able to get onto a good structured um, a plan for maintenance. And it just should be required almost. Boy, I have greased this guy up. Okay, and so here is, and you can see I've got this well greased here. Um, this is the other one, uh, that is the O21. So you've got two, you have that one and you have the one on the end of this. So those are the two, uh, that we're going to be talking about. I don't know exactly what that is. That's in there pretty good, but, uh, let's just put this to the side for, for now. Okay. So I want to explain a couple of things about this. This, this works a little bit differently than some of them. Uh, when you strike this, the CO2 comes up and it goes into the back of the chamber. Of course, CO2 is one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms, and that's where it comes up with CO2. When you puncture this and it goes up, this is what's going to get the brunt of the coldness. And CO2 can go down to minus 109 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus 78 degrees Celsius. So this can get very cold. So the importance of having the right O-ring in here is, is extreme. So let's look at the ones that I purchased on Amazon. So we have a better understanding of what these can take as far as uh, the degree value. All right, so over here we have the Byton O11. These all three are the same, and this is the original. So all of these will fit onto this. Whoa, ha, lost it. Onto here, right here. So they all will fit. But there's some important differences between them. The O11 has a minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit. So... That is not enough because, like I say, 100, and this can go down to 109 degrees Fahrenheit. So that cannot withstand a lot of cold. So you've got cold, and what happens to CO2? It is a compressed liquid. As it comes in here, it's going to flash freeze, which eventually will dry these out and crack them. So that is not good, only minus 30. Here is a silicone one, same, o, same O11, and that is minus 65 degrees. And here is a polyurethane O11, and that is minus 60. So off the bat, you would say that these two would be your best option to replace the original. But it goes a little farther. Now, you may not be able to see that because it's clear, but that's, that's what it looks like. If you can see that, it's, it's just a clear. So I, I apologize for it being on a white piece of paper. Anyhow, now the, this is a two-part uh, because it's not only 
how low of a temperature these can take. It's also the durameter. It's called durameter. Now you'll see this will say 75A durameter, uh, 110-011A, um, or I'm sorry, A70 durameter. Usually there's an A in front of it. Uh, but the durameter is how um, how much the hardness is or the strength of it, or probably both, the hardness and the strength of them. And you can see this has got a 75 durameter and that 70 durameter, and this one is 90 durameter. So the best one that fits with the original is the 90 durameters. And I'm going to leave you a link to these. These are Captain O-Ring on Amazon. Uh, and you can definitely tell the difference. Like these two look identical, different colors maybe, but as far as the firmness on them, they're both uh, very firm, very kind of rigid. And these here, uh, these are very rubbery. I mean, you can tell they, 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 they flex quite a bit. So, and this one, this, this one's just, you know, this is 70. You can definitely tell it, it, it definitely, See, I can't do a bounce test. Anyhow, now going to the O21, there's, I've got the silicone one here, which goes down to minus 65, which is great. Um, and this is the Buno N, uh, and that is minus 30. Now, I wouldn't be so concerned about going down to, you know, minus 60 because these are all on the outside of it. They're not going inside this, you know, this little guy fits right in here and it's in direct relation to um, getting, um, filling up and, and, you know, getting extremely cold. These here probably won't get as quite as cold as the rest of it. So with that being said, uh, the best I could come up with is a 90 duro meter. Um, and this is definitely, you, you can tell, look at, see how soft that is. And when you push this one uh, much more rigid, it, it best reflects these. So this is definitely a two-part series on knowing what size it is, knowing how cold they can get, and what the strength is. All three factors have to go into purchasing the O-ring. So in this case, uh, the Buno N90 durameters minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit is the winner here. And of course, here is the um, polyurethane and it's an O11, 90 durameters goes down to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So there you have it. Um, if you're going to be replacing these, I'm going to recommend that you get uh, yourself, and you can get these at a Walgreens or a CVS. These are like dental hygienist tools. Uh, it's easier to pick out um, these if you have to take them out. It just makes it much easier to get in here and to take it out. I would not recommend taking these out anytime, um, you know, unless you absolutely have to, just not, not something I'd recommend. Now, one other part of the whole picture here is the type of grease that you're putting on. Because again, it, this is, a, this is going this little guy is going to flash freeze. So you've got your, a lot of people may be using this Dow 33. It's, it's very good. Um, stuff. But again, check your temperatures. How low does this go? Um, a lot of them go down to about minus 40, which is really, which is really pretty, pretty cold. Uh, but the one that they recommend is this, this is the 33 medium. So this is a medium weight and it's an extreme low temperature. It goes down to, um, let's see, minus 73 degrees Celsius, which is minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So this gets extremely cold. This is the one that you want to put on here uh, anytime you're using it. Make sure you grease it really well. Even though I've taken this, I, I just did it not too long ago. I am, when I put it back together, I'm going to re-grease it and make sure everything's greased. How often should you do it? And that's another question which I'm even not sure of. But I'm going to say this. Um, if you're using six or seven rounds, I'm going to say every 15 
CO2 cartridges, which will give you about 100 rounds, roughly, d d depending. And so what I do is I take a, a little box. Every time I use it, I drop it. I drop the, the empty CO2 cartridge inside um, the box. When I hit about 15 of them, I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to grease it up um, and make sure it's ready to go. Get into a good maintenance with, with something like this. It'll last you much longer. The O-rings will last you much longer. Uh, and um, yeah, that's, a, that's about it for this, this segment. Um, and, and the other point is if you haven't used it for a very long time and it's just been sitting around, you may want to inspect it and make sure uh, that it is greased because what happens with CO2 also is you, you may have it nice and pasty right now, um, but later down the, the line, you, you know, with the CO2 going into it, it mixes with the uh, condensation and, and what have you. Uh, and this part particularly, this is a, um, this seems to dry out very quickly quickly and um, it, it is you know it, it is definitely something rough so before I put it back in I'm gonna you know I'm going to now I don't know why it, it is you do you think it should slide you know nice and smooth it does not um, so I'm, again I'm gonna I'm gonna lube this up very well don't be afraid to, to really put it on. I'm going to put you a link. You don't need a big thing like this. Um, I just happened to pick up a, a big one a long time ago. Um, but there's a small one. A link down below. And uh, yeah, hey, that's it, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe if you care. Thanks again for watching. Take care.